And that's exactly where we begin. Your voice, your vote, and the candidates on both sides making their final pushes ahead of Election Day. President Biden calling out election deniers fueled by former President Trump and urging voters to protect democracy and cast ballots for Democrats. I know there's a lot at stake in these midterm elections, from our economy, to the safety of our streets, to our personal freedoms, but there's something else at stake, democracy itself. The extreme MAGA element of the Republican Party, which is a minority of that party, as I said earlier, but it's this driving force. We can't ignore the impact this is having on our country. It's damaging, it's corrosive, and it's destructive. And I want to be very clear, this is not about me. It's about all of us. All this, as Republicans argue, Americans are more worried about other issues like the economy and inflation. ABC's Libby Schulze joins me now. You know, you and I were talking about that. Clearly, inflation is killing us, and that's what Republicans are hammering on. And no matter Democrat or Republican, we're all feeling that every day now since those rates have been rising. There's just no doubt about it, Kira. When you look at what voters say is the most important issue to them, it is the economy and it is inflation. Those are consistently the top issues as Americans across the country are feeling the pain of higher prices and of higher interest rates, which is really the Federal Reserve's way to try to tame those higher prices. We saw another rate hike from the Federal Reserve yesterday. This is something that directly translates into higher costs for Americans on their mortgages, on their credit card bills. You know, the Federal Reserve says it's the way that we can eventually bring down prices. But for right now, there is a lot of pain out there in the economy. And this is a message that Republicans have been drilling home. And it's one of the reasons why President Biden's approval is underwater on his economic handling, his handling of the economy. He continues to suffer in his approval ratings. This is a message that Republicans have continuously been making throughout this campaign. The president in this final stretch has tried to talk about how his own plans are going to bring down costs. But of course, Kira, notably in this Remarks, these remarks last night, he took a different stand. He said, we're going to talk about what is at stake when it comes to the election itself. We're going to talk about democracy. And really, the issue here is that democracy is at stake. Democracy is on the ballot. Trying to just make this case to voters that, sure, we know that those are key issues. He's making that point. But also, here is why this is such an important election when it comes to voting integrity in the future of our, of our, our democracy, he says. There's an alarming rise in the number of our people in this country condoning political violence or simply remaining silent because silence is complicity. The disturbing rise of voter intimidation, the pernicious tendency to excuse political violence or at least, at least trying to explain it away. We can't allow this sentiment to grow. We must confront it head on now. Now, the other point here that the president made is a clear parallel between the attack on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband and the January 6th Capitol insurrection, trying to say that there really is no place for political violence, for voter intimidation. Those are clearly concerns for the president as we are just a couple days out here from Election Day, Kira. And now you've got former President Donald Trump, of course, holding uh, his rallies uh, state to state today. It was Iowa stumping for Republicans there and clearly looking ahead to 2024. No doubt about it. When you have anyone of this highest stature going to to Iowa, it's going to raise concerns. Does this mean it's uh, time to make the formal announcement? Obviously, Iowa is the place where a lot of presidential hopefuls formalize their plans for for the presidential election. But the president today is going to be stumping for Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley, who is seeking his eighth term in the Senate. He's 89 years old. Through this term, uh, if he wins, he would be 95 when that term ends. And former President Trump trying to shore up support for this. Uh, senator who's really been kind of a staple in the Senate for so many years, who's accepted uh, Trump's endorsement and part of a bigger stretch, Kira, by former President Trump to hit a series of states. He's going to hit battleground states, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida in just the next couple of days. So President Biden, uh, back on the campaign trail, as you were talking about today, it was New Mexico, California. Let's talk about why he's prioritizing these states uh, less than a week away now for midterms. This really speaks to the president's strategy where he's going to some of these blue states, places like California that are solidly blue, to try to shore up support for seats that Democrats are trying to hold on to in these midterm elections. The president hasn't been making as many trips to some of those swing states, places in the West like 
Arizona or Nevada, where Senate races really could determine if Democrats will continue to hold on to their majority in the Senate, their very slim majority, that is. And former and, and President Biden is aware that, you know, he doesn't want to tip the scale one way or the other. And some of those races, candidates are saying they would prefer that he doesn't come and directly campaign for them. So instead, he's going to some of these places he solidly won in 2020. He's making the case for in the, in the New Mexico governor, the Democratic governor, and a congressional candidate in California, Democratic uh, incumbent trying to say we've got to hold on to these seats, we've got to keep our majority in the House, really trying to kind of win over those voters who already are in his own camp as he's trying to understand that really the key here is, is to keep as many of those seats as possible, given some of the polling that we're seeing uh, showing Republican gains just in this final stretch here, Kira. All right, Elizabeth Schulze, thank you so much, Elizabeth.